John, a member of the circumcision, says, If anyone says he has no sin, we make him a liar. Now Paul, a member of the uncircumcision, says we are dead to sin. Therefore, if we are dead to sin, we are sinless. They are two teaching spirits. One pours sweet water, and another pours bitter water. We are sweetened with the gospel of the uncircumcision and respond to Paul's epistles, because that is what places us in the spirit of good, not evil. For example, uh, uh, the system. The system says, God bless you. Example. Growing in grace says, blessed. One took place, another is in the future. The system says, hallelujah. That is the system, the spirit of the world. Now, how does the spirit of God say, Abba, Father, for that is the spirit that dwells in our hearts. According to Romans 8, 17, the system says, I am sick, I am poor, I am wrong. How does the Spirit of God speak in the mouth of a blessed person? This is a light tribulation. This is momentary. I am blessed even though I am in mild tribulation. Now, there is something that really caught my attention, and that is about James, a member of the circumcision. He says, and this is very important, because this is what defines the foundation on which we live. It says, ah, James chapter 1 verse 16 says, Do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights. James is saying here, look, no, no, do not err. All good things come from God. There is nothing evil in God. And naturally, when he says that, he is implying then how bad it comes from whom it comes from. Someone will say, well, bad things come from the devil. But Paul tells us that the devil is destroyed. And why does James say, do not be deceived, my beloved brethren? It is as if someone said, there is someone out there erring, there is someone out there saying that evil and good come from God and good things come only from God, said James. So that you see that they are two spirits of teaching. They are two fundamentals. It is a way of speaking. For example, notice why James says, do not err. He was talking about Paul. Why? Because Paul says in Romans 9 verse 22, it says, what if God although willing to demonstrate his wrath and to make his power known, endured with great patience objects of wrath prepared for destruction. Verse 21 says, Does not the potter have power over the clay from the same lump to make one vessel for honor and another for dishonor? Hath not the potter power to make one unto destruction and another unto salvation? This language James did not know. That is why he said, Do not err. All good things come from God, from the Father of lights. And so that is why we are giving this study to define, to define that the only one who is acting here is God. God is the one who governs both good and evil. Notice how it says, as Jeremiah says there. Sorry, Lamentation, which is, well, it's a book that is attributed to Jeremiah. But Lamentation, Lamentation says, let's look it up quickly in chapter 3, verse 37. Chapter 3, verse 37. Who is he who speaks and it comes to pass when the Lord has not commanded it? Out of the mouth of the Most High proceedeth not evil and good? Implying that when he gives a decree, whether it is good or bad, it comes from God. James is saying, do not err. God does not produce anything bad. And here the prophet is correcting James, the apostles of the circumcision. 